Tampa on Fulton today. A first of its kind meeting gives county leaders an opportunity to showcase Fulton's progress to federal and state legislators. We'll have details. And Marta wants to know how you feel about its plans to improve and streamline certain bus routes. That and more starts right now on Fulton Today. Welcome to Fulton Today, everybody. I'm Shania Chavez. Congressmen and state legislators join county commissioners in a first of its kind meeting to address the future of Fulton. From transportation to public safety, all agree that there's much work to be done together. FGTV's Priscilla Ortega was at the meeting and she has the report now. Elected officials from all across the county came together because they want to work together to create what's best for Fulton County, which also means what's best for their constituents. It's not every day county and state elected leaders get this view from the Fulton County Airport's air traffic control tower. And it's not every day they all gather to discuss collective objectives for the county. This is a new day in Fulton County. That was the case during this first Fulton Day showcase where the majority of Fulton commissioners laid out the key priorities for the county. The best way to keep folks out of the criminal justice system is for them to have a good job. The objective, to secure greater support and commitments from federal and state officials. We worked with the commission in every way to make sure we get all the monies that we can down to the county. U.S. Congressman David Scott praised the work of the commissioners and the outlook for residential and economic development for Fulton. It's a wonderful county and it's an excellent place for people to raise their families and start and develop businesses. That's the key. And you have that going in states in South Fulton County. Good afternoon. My name is Chuck Martin. I represent the Fulton Sentiments State District. Representative Chuck Martin shared. We have an opportunity in Fulton County uh, with the, the economics turning around, the, the county having a, a leadership team and, and the commissioners and with Mr. Anderson and, and, and his department heads um, to to look forward for once in Fulton County. It's the reason county officials gave a tour of the Fulton County Airport. The facility provides more than a thousand jobs, generates over $158 million in total economic output, and is a popular film location. Airport officials say that could increase if enhancements are made to the runway. There is uh, a possibility you could extend this long runway, but you'd have to extend it over uh, both industrial, industrial, but if you notice, it looks like the road does dip down there. The event ended here at the Fulton County Airport because elected officials say they see the airport as an opportunity for economic growth and revenue for the county. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Priscilla Ortega. Thank you very much, Priscilla. On the minds of many of those elected officials is the November general election. and. Parents, if you recently sent your child to college, it should be on your mind as well. If your college student wants to exercise his or her right to vote on November 8th but cannot make it to the polls due to being out of state, now is the time to start thinking about absentee voting. We will start mailing out absentee ballots in late September. You can apply for an absentee ballot by mail. And if you're overseas, the earlier you get it in, the better. If you are uh, local, make sure that you have all of the required information. You can get that information off of our website, or you can download an application there at www.fultonelections.com. And whether you plan to vote early at one of the 24 early voting locations or on the 8th of November, keep in mind two things, the deadline to register is October 10th and the other thing that I want to remind voters is if they vote on election day they have to vote in their precinct. The advantage of early voting, why we encourage people to vote early, is you're probably going to face shorter lines during early voting, a quicker check-in process, and you'll be able to pick the time and the day to vote. As Mr. Barron mentioned earlier, if you need more voting information you can simply log on to FultonElections.com. 
High school and college students looking for employment have the county's Workforce Development Division on their side. It's hosting its second Youth Enrichment Services, or YES for short, this month at the Adamsville Career Center on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive on Wednesday, September 21st from 11 a.m. to noon. The purpose of the Youth Enrichment Orientation Services is that we want to inform youth of exactly what type of services we offer, um, which can include GED services, post-secondary opportunities, as well as entering the workforce and how they can do that. We want to inform them about those services, as well as let them know the process to get into the program. The year-round program increases work opportunities for youth ages 16 to 21, encourages leadership and promotes independent thinking. It also assists youth with evaluating and accomplishing their educational and career goals. If you're looking to get job opportunities, if you're looking to get yourself in post-secondary, like I said, whether that be a four-year opportunity, two-year, a junior college, or a short-term uh, type of educational source, you want to come to this orientation to learn about how you can get our program. It's a great opportunity that's hard to pass up because there's nobody else that wants to give you a scholarship and use those funds to help you go to school and to find those opportunities that are going to advance your career. Career. Now, because Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act eligibility requirements will be presented, parents are encouraged to attend. For more information, you can log on to the county's website at FultonCountyGA.gov. A disturbance breaks out in the Fulton County Courthouse, all in the name of training. No, that wasn't real. It was a part of a training video featuring six inmate workers produced to show bailiffs and sheriff's deputies how to respond to actions that may occur in various environments, including courtrooms. We have an inmate that's being sentenced. Uh, he's getting life in prison and he doesn't like that at all. Um, what we're preparing our staff to do is respond, respond to an outburst from either the prisoner who's being sentenced or people who may be in the gallery witnessing the proceedings. And uh, we're teaching them to use proper and reasonable force, if necessary, to handle those types of situations. This is just one of the various innovative processes used to make sure that staff members are properly trained to serve the citizens of Fulton County. Fulton deputies have increased their training at the Fulton County Courthouse since its real disturbance in 2005 when courthouse shooter Brian Nichols broke away from the facility. And if riding MARTA is a part of your daily routine, listen up. The Transit Authority is hosting a public hearing to talk about modified bus routes. Here now to tell us all about the meeting is Transit Planning Director Don Williams. Welcome to Fulton today. Hi, Shania. Thanks for having me. All right, so tell everybody about the public hearing taking place on September 19th. Yes, we are holding a public hearing at the uh, Fulton County Assembly Hall on September 19, 2016. And the purpose of that is really to get feedback on proposed service modifications that we are looking to do in December, December the 10th, 2016. And talk about some of the bus routes impacted. We have a total of 10 routes. Let me just quickly list those. Uh, route 2, Route 16, Route 33, Route 34, Route 47, Route 67, Route 102, Route 123, Route 165, and Route 191. And Don, why were these modifications necessary? Well, one of the things we do on a regular basis is monitor our service to make sure that we have the most effective and efficient service out there. So one of the things that, as part of that, we look at improving the overall reliability of the service, making sure that the service is safe in terms of how we operate the service. Uh, some of the things that we look at is on-time performance, schedule adherence, uh, we look at safety, we look at uh, those uh, inefficiencies in the system in terms of straightening out some of the routes and things of that sort. We also look at uh, customer uh, requests and demands, so those are some of the things we take into consideration when we change our service. And what do you want to hear from the public during this hearing? One of the things that we really want to get from our customers is feedback. We want to know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. So if this is the opportunity for them to come out to the to let us hear some of the things that they have to say about the proposed service modifications and then also provide input in terms of some of the things that can be improved upon. And your final thoughts? Yes, uh, certainly we value our customers' opinions and feedback. We really encourage you to come out to the public hearing. If you cannot make the one on the 19th, we have two other locations, one in Lake Clayton County and the other one in 
in Decatur. We encourage you to come out and provide us with your input. And if you can't make neither, either one of those public hearings, then we certainly would encourage you to go on our website, www.itsmarter.com. Uh, on that website, we have all the information about the route modifications, as well as a comment card where you can fill out and then submit your comments. Again, we want your feedback. Don Williams with MARTA. Great information, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks again for having me. Now, for more information, uh, a video presentation, and a comment form, you can log on to itsmarta.com. And still to come, a unanimous vote gives county residents a chance to receive discounts on almost all health care services. It's a part of our district by district coverage. Next. Fulton commissioners assess the first ever Fulton Day in the county. Here's this week's District by District coverage. We begin with reaction from Fulton commissioners about the first ever Fulton Day event. As we mentioned earlier in the show, the Board of Commissioners and County Department heads jointly engaged with congressional and Georgia leaders to address future needs of the county and its citizens. The group met at the Fulton Aviation Community and Cultural Center. I think it was a great day of, of good communication um, and I think they appreciated the update on what Fulton County is doing to uh, serve our community. A great dialogue with both, with both the federal officials and, and their representative as well as uh, state officials um, and I think really an opportunity for us to share with them kind of hey here's what's been going on within the county and here's sort of a lot of the changes that have taken place and then get some dialogue and, and, and then back and forth exchange with them about where are our areas of overlap and the opportunities for us to work together. It's uh, always really neat when, when we can get together and talk to other folks about what we're doing, especially those folks at the state and the, and the federal level who, who uh, control so much uh, of what we try to do. They've been very responsive. They've offered ideas and suggestions and the board and the staff have been very open to receiving those ideas. So. We look forward to moving forward uh, as we prepare for 2017. Leaders say the objective of the gathering was to build ongoing communications between Fulton County government and federal and state partners. Fulton's Intergovernmental Affairs Division hosted the event and talks are already underway for another Fulton Day. District 4 Commissioner Joan Garner leads the effort to encourage board members to sign on to a discount health care plan for citizens. Commissioners unanimously agree to approve the Coast to Coast RX program with financial marketing concepts incorporated. The online based card will offer discounts on prescription drugs as well as provide discounts on dental vision, hearing, the diabetes savings program, imaging and lab tests and even veterinarian services for pets. In these times, uh, the cost of medical services can escalate for many families, especially those who are on a tight budget or low income. So families can save up to 60%. You can get full details at coasttocoastrx.com. The cards are also available at county health centers, government centers, and libraries. And finally, in District 6, a look at the We Matter Teens Visual Arts Extensive Exhibition at the South Fulton Arts Center. The Summer Teen Arts Intensive offered artistic teens the opportunity to learn and experience art in an immersive four-week camp. Students use their life experiences and raw emotion to create and develop original works of visual art and dramatic dance performances. The teens' creations are combined to create a production and gallery exhibition. Programs like this is vital to our young people simply because it creates a platform for young people to express themselves, for young people to uh, get their point across, and to actually do it in a positive way. And the most important thing is to, 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 for South Fulton Art Center is to create an environment where they can express themselves and be creative and, and be guided and mentored by other artists who are actually facilitating the process with them during their creative time. The South Fulton Art Center students drew inspiration from current events and social issues to create the original production. Now you can catch more of your commissioners at work all this week with the rebroadcast of the Board of Commissioners meeting right here on FGTV. 
and still to come, a little TLC is all it took to get the College Park Health Center looking its best. We'll have all of the renovation details up next. Fall starts next week, but the warm temperatures will be with us for a while, as will the threat of the Zika virus. But FGTV's Lynn Vaughn has a story of how county officials are trying to keep that threat far from our community. Zika prevention and awareness is going strong in Fulton County. We had a game plan set back in the spring. We put it into action early, so we haven't received any major threat or any type of problems. Everything's pretty much been handled in-house and you know, good compared to other municipalities around the country in the southeast. The health department started prevention measures in May and contracted its mosquito spraying services in June, one month earlier than usual. We have a list of senior centers which they spray and then also um, parks where there's highly susceptible population of small kids because um, Obviously, their immune system is not going to be as strong as a full body adult. The Environmental Health Services Division is also continuing to check the 12,000 mosquito traps in the county to determine which mosquito species are in our area and if any is carrying the Zika virus. The good news is not one has been found to have it. So that means all of us must keep doing our part to discourage mosquito breeding. The health department is urging residents to continue tip and toss. That's tipping over and tossing out any standing water near or around your homes or businesses after every rainfall. So prevention is each person in Fulton County's responsibility. It's, you know, obviously we're here to help out if it gets bad. But the more people that help, the more people that are aware, the better. Again, Environmental Health Services says no mosquitoes carrying Zika have been found in Fulton County. The Georgia Department of Public Health reports the number of travel-related Zika cases statewide is hovering around 80. However, no cases of Zika have originated in our state. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Lynn Vaughn. Thank you, Lynn. Renovations at the College Park Health Center WIC Clinic finally completed. Expanding the file room, adding a multi-use office, and a fresh paint job is what has the staff most excited, but the biggest upgrade will immediately be noticed as soon as clients walk in. The last thing that we are renovating is our, it's, it's really the first stop that our clients hit when they come in for services. It's where they're issued a number. Mm -hmm. um, we use a number system for, for the line and that whole room is being redone. It's really cluttered and tight. Um, we're opening it up a little bit and we're putting in two windows. So instead of coming um, inside the clinic to wait in line, uh -huh. they get to wait in the lobby and it'll be a much faster ticket system. Okay. The renovation project was necessary so that the clients can receive speedier services. Renovation was necessary because we do have a lot of flow issues here in clinic and space issues. You know, we, we're a fairly big program here at College Park and there wasn't a lot of room for growth. So what we're just trying to do is, is grow a little bit. And um, it could be that in the future we grow a little bit more. So just one step at a time. There will be a re-grant opening later this year where people can come in to talk to the Women, Infant and Children program partners and to see the new upgrades. Residents who need HIV treatment now have a new location to get help. Mercy Care Atlanta, which partners with the Fulton County Ryan White program, is opening an HIV early intervention and treatment clinic at the City of Refuge. The clinic will be open on Thursdays. Employees say this new location on Joseph E. Boone Boulevard is needed for that area. In a lot of the discussions that we've had, it was noted that people want more access to health care in, in relation to HIV positives, to the care for HIV positives. So we have a clinic at the City of Refuge in zip code 30314 in the area known as Vine City or the Bluff. Mercy Care will continue to provide HIV treatment services at the Decatur Street location as well. 
Now, according to Mercy Care Atlanta, 15,000 people are living with HIV and AIDS in Fulton County, and only about half of them are engaged in HIV treatment. Since 1985, the organization has provided those in need with medical services and outreach programs. HIV treatment is just one of the organization's areas of service. And when Fulton Today returns, the Southwest Art Center offers no apologies for its latest art exhibit. We'll explain why. A candid exhibit by a group of African-American artists is now on display. The exhibit at the Southwest Art Center is titled Unapologetic 2. The artists used one quote by writer Alex L. as an inspiration for their pieces. The quote, I am not afraid of my truth anymore and I will not omit pieces of myself to make you more comfortable. And especially as artists, we should be ourselves. We shouldn't be scared to say what we need to say in our work. And whether you're a musician or a visual artist or a dancer, same thing. And that's what we're doing in Unapologetic. The artwork from about two dozen artists will be on display until the end of September. You can see the exhibit at the Southwest Art Center during gallery hours. You can call the center at 404-613-3220 to get additional information. And finally, the 2016 Olympics may be over, but the hopes of being in the next summer games is just beginning at the county pool. The aquatic supervisor for Welcome All Park says after Team USA did well in the Olympics, interest for the county swimming program went up 40 percent. Just coming off the Olympics and a great energy that is uh, fed into our program, I mean, I can't ask for anything more. You know, the discipline, the commitment to our program is what we're looking for, and I feel that we really have a great grasp of what's going on right now in the swim world. Many kids on the county swordfish swim team are already setting records locally. Now they have their eyes set on even bigger goals. I would like to make it to the next Olympics um, and take my swimming career further into college. Yeah, that's one of my desires, to go to uh, get a scholarship in college and go to the Olympics one day. Now it's not just children who are rushing to the pool. Employees say senior pool activities have gone up 60% since the games. To learn more about swimming programs available, call Welcome All Park 404-612-4058. And before we go, our reminder that we'd like to connect with you online. Check us out anytime on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our YouTube channel. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. Thank you so much for watching. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.